Hello fellow sim racers. Today's video is going to be a little bit different to the usual kind of thing I make for the channel. That's in part because today's video idea fell through at the last minute, but also because I've received quite a lot of requests to talk about how I make the screenshots that I use in my video thumbnails, but I guess all of this applies to screenshots in general. Now there are two components really to making the screenshots, the first of which is actually photographing the car, and the second of which is the editing and stuff. So to start with, I'm going to crack on with Assetto Corsa and take a photo of the, uh, the McLaren Formula Hybrid 2020, the RSS car, at Red Bull Ring, see if we can get something a bit dramatic going on because that looked really good in the previous thumbnail. And then we're going to jump into Photoshop and talk about how I do some of the post-processing and stuff. So I'm going to start by I think we're going to advance this replay I've got saved, uh, just of a couple of laps. I'm going to advance it up to somewhere where the car's at the top of the hill because we'll be able to get some of those really cool scenes looking over the valley at, at Red Bull Ring. Now my gut feeling is that somewhere into the hairpin is going to look really good. So I'm going to load up Stereo Joycam, which is what I use to control the, the camera movements in the set of course, but that's not actually working for some reason. So I'll just use the keyboard because why not? Uh, and I'm just going to use the camera and just have a look around at, at some of the scenes just so I can and get an idea of where it looks best. Now, for those of you that don't know, I, I actually worked as a professional photographer for years. I went to university and studied it, so I've got a bit of a background of this kind of thing. But I've never done motorsport photography professionally. Uh, that's only really been a, a hobby of mine. But yeah, looking around, we've got some cool mountains here, but the textures are a bit weird and we've got this crane. Uh, and barriers and stuff in the way. So I sort of think looking down the valley this way is going to make a lot of sense, which is sort of why I stopped the car on the apex of the hairpin, well, close to the apex of the hairpin there. So yeah, let's just get down to, to eye level and have a look. I'm not too worried about the focus at the moment. We can, we can deal with all of that. Obviously, if you're a real photographer, you'd be back here somewhere and you'd have to use a, a telephoto lens. Uh, the more you zoom in, obviously, with a telephoto lens, the more it sort of compresses the image. Uh, and we don't really want that, I don't think. I think I want to capture some of this, uh, the background scenes in here uh, to get as much sort of drama into the shot as possible. Now, that means a wider lens. You couldn't do this in real life because because uh, it would be very dangerous. But I think we want to get a wide, reasonably wide lens fairly close in so we can get some of this mountain range in the background. I'm not too interested in getting the barrier in there. Um, so we might actually wind the car back a tiny bit and just stop it slightly earlier so I don't have to worry about that too much. Now with, with cropping, uh, this is sort of a, an issue, a thing that a lot of amateurs get wrong I think, is that you kind of want to try and fill the frame uh, as best you can, unless you're doing like a really landscapey piece where the, the subject is actually the location, which I guess we kind of are to an extent here. Um, you know, it, all, you get all the distractions in the background. Now we're going to lose that by bringing up photo mode and turning back on the depth of field. Okay, it's focused all the way on the background. So you're going to just bring that forward and we'll focus somewhere on the car just while we finish cropping the shot. Now I want a little bit of roll because it's very flat with the angle of the car there, which doesn't really emphasize the fact that this is kind of very hilly and dynamic here. So we just want a tiny bit of a roll in the camera, I think. And I think I'm pretty happy with that in general as, as my sort of starting point. We can always address it in a little bit. Obviously, the nice thing about working in a racing sim is that the car's stopped. You can uh, spend all day doing this stuff. You don't have to worry about just getting the shot straight out of the camera. On that note, I'm using Horizon at the moment, as recommended by Mike Sim Racing 604, uh, which is a post-processing filter and a bunch of different settings. I haven't got them dialed in the way I'd like. It's still a bit of a blurry mess in places so uh, we're just going to live with that. Sorry I should mention that photo mode has been updated in some of the later uh, versions of content manager so if your photo mode doesn't look like this go into content manager and turn on the experimental photo mode or new photo mode or whatever it's called. It's got some very cool features which I'm, I'm going to show you in a second. The thing I'm going to do next is I'm going to skip over this uh, this polarizing filter here. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, mainly because I want to get the light sorted. One of the nice things about this is it brings back the tools, which I think have been missing with Sol for changing the sort of angle and time offset of the uh, of the sun. So we can move it so it's uh, it's early morning or late afternoon. 
uh, which gets us all the sort of beautiful golden hour colors, that kind of thing. And we can change where the sun is in the sky. So I can immediately see just panning around, but having this shot backlit is really dramatic because it emphasizes the mountain range and uh, we get the sort of cool highlights coming across the top of the car. So that might be something that's, that's a bit fun. Now you can't, obviously can't do this in every photo mode. I'm kind of taking the mickey here a bit with this because this is so uh, well developed. What it doesn't have is, is a proper aperture control, which a lot of other sim racing sims do, which would be really nice. You've just got the, the depth of field cal uh, calculation, which is really just the focal distance rather than actual true aperture setting. But uh, you can play about with the light. Obviously, in other racing sims, you can just change the time of day prior to loading up the replay or prior to recording the replay. It takes a little bit more time, but uh, you can do it after the fact with this, which is very nice. So I think we're going to try and play around with having the sun over the horizon there. Let's just see how high in the sky we should go. Now, that looks very dramatic, but we've got no light on the car. Uh, you can do a sort of version of bracketing, essentially, where you could take multiple shots. So we could take it a shot now to get that really dramatic sky. Uh, and, and the beautiful colors and then we could maybe bring the light up a bit so we've got a bit more light on the car and then composite them together afterwards but that's not really what I'm going for here I want to try and get it right in camera as best as possible and yeah something like this works really well I like the compositional uh, element going on there with the sun just on the horizon and the the car coming across sort of at, at opposite angles so you've got autofocus in this, which is really nice now. So you can control click on uh, where you want the car to be in focus. Obviously, because we're really close in, we have a very narrow depth of field. So if we focus on, say, Lando's helmet, things I didn't think I'd be saying today. <laughs> if we focus on Lando's helmet, the, the front of the car is already out of focus. Uh, even worse if you focus at the back. So it's going to have to be a little bit of a compromise or we could, we could focus stack. So we could uh, take a shot focused on the front and take a shot focused on the middle maybe and, and on the rear and then composite them together. You can see by the rear that we're losing the sort of blurriness in the background. So we're losing the separation of the car from the background, which is so nice at the front. So we might actually, I wasn't planning on doing this, we might do a composite of, of two shots with the, the nose and Lando uh, sort of visor area. I can't, I can't say his helmet now. I've realized that I've done that and I, I can't, I can't be doing that. Right, so um, we're looking pretty good here in terms of composition. We're going to leave it at 40 and we're going to use the uh, sort of post-production tools, Photoshop, uh, to give the car a bit more, just a bit more separation, really. It's obviously horribly underexposed, this image, but there's not a lot we can do about it and keep the detail in the background. So I am pretty happy with the overall composition. Let's just have a look at the, the roll. Yeah, I think we actually just want a little bit more in there, just make it a tiny bit more dynamic. Check our composition for the last time. Have we made it worse? Potentially. I'm happy with that. I'm going to commit to that. And I'm going to take a shot with it focused on the nose. So we'll do take the first shot and then I'm going to take a second shot focused in the center of the car. See, I don't mind the, uh, the rear wing being a tiny bit out of focus. I think that just adds to the fact the idea that you're really close into the car makes it look really sort of dramatic. So we're, we're happy with that. So next up, I'm going to jump over to my editing machine and we'll load up Photoshop and see if we can bring this image to life. So I use Photoshop because I've, well, kind of been held hostage by the Adobe Corporation for the last decade at least, but you can use any editing software you like really for this. I find one that allows you to use layers is, is very helpful though for, for doing things like focus stacking or uh, if you want to remove a car from a background to help give it a bit more separation. There's a lot of tricks you can do with slightly more advanced stuff. So uh, I think GIMP is still free and uh, Affinity makes some very low priced, very feature rich photo tools as well if, if you uh, if you interested in going the paid route but don't want to get into Adobe's crazy expensive monthly subscription. So I've brought both of those files into Photoshop. We've got the one that's focused on Lando's helmet. I've done it again. And the one that's focused on the nose of the McLaren. And I can see straight away we've got a couple of issues we need to solve with this image. First of all, we've got that horrible uh, sun that we need to, to just deal with. That's us pushing the graphics engine past where it's supposed to be a little bit. But we can, we can solve that. The other is that 
the image is very gray and washed out. It looks quite dynamic, but once you see it compared to the final image, and I'll do some side-by-sides at the end if I'm feeling adventurous, uh, you'll be able to see just how lacking in, in saturation and contrast the image currently is. Uh, the blacks aren't true black, the whites aren't true white, and we, we're just leaving a lot of information uh, compressed into a very narrow band in the middle of the image. We'll go through all of that in a bit anyway. The other issue we've got for stacking this image is that the sky has moved between those two shots uh, because I quite often use the windy preset in um, in Soul so it creates a bit more movement in the background. It makes uh, some of the video stuff look a bit more dynamic. I'd like to turn the wind up and that means even in the like brief time we've uh, been between the two shots the background's moved so I'm going to have to choose one of the skies. So what, I'm, what I think I'm going to do uh, is we've got Lando here on the lower layer uh, I've called it Lando but it's sort of the main body of the car that's a useful bit but the only piece of information I actually really want from this is kind of from the halo to the back of the engine cover um, whereas the rest of it actually looks much better in that image I like prefer the blurriness of the you know the background details here in the other one so I'm actually gonna swap them around and you'll see the reason for this in a minute if you're familiar with Photoshop then this is teaching you to suck eggs and I must say this isn't really supposed to be a Photoshop tutorial I'm just wittering on at this stage so I'm gonna create uh, what's known as a mask and this allows you to select how much of this layer is showing above the other layer so it works on a, a black and white gradient so if we go completely black on, on that layer we color it in black I've just used the paint bucket tool you can see that none of it shows through so what we can then do is use uh, a white paintbrush uh, use a soft edged one so the hardness is down to zero to start painting in the bits of that layer that we found useful so uh, at the moment my opacity is down at nothing so let's turn that up to full so it comes through and we can start to see that as I paint over this it's bringing in the in focus area around Lando around the engine cover that we liked and maybe this area here looks better it's actually about the same not making a huge difference there but yeah we'll have the air box as well all of the halo apologies if this is a bit subtle on YouTube but you'll be able to see when I do the before and after that it's just at bringing into focus this stuff in the middle which is kind of important I would like a little bit more focus when I took the photo on the nose cone here on the sort of top of the nose but can't win them all still looks reasonably natural if, if you're looking at it critically the fact that it's a bit blurry there uh, and maybe on the back end plate sort of gives it away but this isn't you know we're not in the camera club we're not pixel peeping it doesn't really matter so that has also solved our issue with the uh, the backgrounds not aligning what I will do is I'm actually going to commit to that and uh, so I'm going to duplicate those layers and then merge them so we now have a just a single layer to work from I'm going to deal with that horrible sun before before we go too far. And the first thing I'm going to try, actually, is making a copy of that area of the sun. So I'm going to select it with the, the marquee tool, make sure it's got a bit of feather on it. That's plenty. In fact, I'm going to go a little bit bigger with that. I'm going to copy this onto a new layer, uh, duplicate it onto a new layer. And I'm going to try blurring it. So uh, which blur do we want to use? Let's use Gaussian blur. And yeah, as you can see, I actually tested that this would work before I started recording the tutorial so the, yeah, the setting I had it on was pretty much there. You can get away with doing this because the background is blurry. We can get away with doing this on an in-focus background so let's just tune that in roughly where we want. That looks great. Gets rid of the really harsh sun model that was sort of there and, and, and looked very unrealistic so there's a before and after. If we wanted we could maybe uh, use uh, another mask like we used uh, when mapping in the middle of the McLaren to sort of get rid of some of the bloom across the skyline here but I actually quite like it it sort of looks like one of those internal lens reflections that you, you quite often get so I'm, I'm actually gonna leave it so for now I am pretty happy with the overall look of the image so we'll just get on to the the real basic photographic editing. Now you could use something like Lightroom for this which I use for all of my like real world photographic stuff but since we're in Photoshop we might as well just stay here it's got all the tools we need so primarily I like to use the curves tool for sorting out the brightness mainly because it's got the histogram there so we can see what's going on. First of all you can see there's no information here in the, in the bottom of the image that means there's just 
what should be black, like this area here, really in dark shadow in the front of the car, is actually, I don't know, 10% grey or something. So we could straight away move that down so we've got proper blacks. Excuse me, my voice is cracking. I've uh, got a little bit of a cold. So we don't want to do that entirely because that ends up crushing the shadows and it ends up looking super dramatic but looks very dark so for doing that my favorite tool for this is actually the levels tool because you can adjust the black point without really changing the rest of the image so that's fine we've done that we can now see that in the histogram there the the blacks start at black perfect there's not a lot of information anywhere in this image in, in the foreground uh, in this sort of foreground area so we need to look at brightening all of this up so i'm just moving the the curve around to see really where the information all is so if we push this up in a really horribly unrealistic manner we can start to see that actually there is quite a lot of color and brightness detail here by pulling it up it's not looking horrible so we can get away with actually doing quite a lot obviously it kills the background but by using these uh layer effects here we can we can also use uh, a mask as we used before so uh, even if we did want this mclaren to look this bright which we don't we could go in with a mask and then make sure we clicked on the mask itself and then paint the background back in like that and straight away we've got a different set of exposure for the foreground and background so uh, see how much it brightens that up that's obviously not exactly what we're going to do uh, we'll just get rid of that but that's sort of the magic of working with this stuff so what i want to do here is pull up some of the shadows just so we've got grays in there rather than solid black in all of the dark areas and i want to pull up some of the highlights because you can see in this part of the image there's it's it's quite flat there's not a lot going on and we can actually get away with crunching quite quite a lot of it pulling it upwards on the uh, the mclaren itself without getting into too much trouble but we're gonna end up with a very an image very lacking in contrast if we're not careful with this so we're just going to pull up gently overall because you can use multiple layers with this to give yourself a little bit more fidelity of control on that and that's what i'm going to do i am going to go back in and paint out that that background because i'm going to treat the sky separately or not at all and i'm actually going to do the same with this grass area here and just gently painting again we got a soft edge brush so we don't have to be too precise with this if you want to go mental you can go in and go in with a pen tool all around the car and mask it off but you know for this kind of thing it's not really necessary so what we've done then is just bring up the foreground exposure it's almost like we've got a light uh, on the camera or we're shooting with a flash or something without it being too harsh we've got a nice softbox flash or something looking quite good there it is lacking in in a bit of contrast so we can use the we could use the brightness and just contrast controls just to, to tweak that that's sort of a good contrast level we lost a bit of brightness doing it it's always a sort of compromise between the two we could do this with another curves thing but this is this is quite quick and i like i like doing it this way so that's looking quite good let's um again just paint out the sky so we know what we're, we're dealing with here you can copy across the mask from the other layer if you wanted um, i didn't that's what the brightness and contrast is doing so again looking pretty good pretty happy with that and you can see now that we've got a much more balanced image. We've got the drama in the background, but we've also got the drama in the foreground. It's sort of separated by this black band here, or this dark band here, I should say. And that's exposing to me that perhaps we do need a bit more contrast in the background to balance against the, the McLaren. So what I would normally do at this stage is add another, in fact, I will add another curves layer or a brightness and contrast layer just to see what we can do there. But what I'm actually going to do first is just put all of these in a in a folder so we can quickly turn them on and off just so we can see how far it's come. This is the image sort of out of the computer once it's been composited together to get the, the focus right up to where we are now. You can see just how flat the image that comes out of the computer is. And that's true of pretty much all of the racing sims. Like iRacing, Race Room uh, are quite flat. R Factor 2 is really, really grey uh, and often has some horrible colour casts as well that you have to deal with. We'll get into colours in a minute. But what immediately comes out of the computer uh, off of a screen capture or a screenshot mode is usually very, very flat on, on racing sims. Project Cars 2 isn't as bad uh, and a set of course competizione is better. So obviously the more modern graphic systems tend to look a bit better but you can see we've 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 made some good progress there what was i going to do next i was going to sort out the background 
Again, let's just do a quick brightness and contrast. So again, we're not looking at what's going on with the McLaren, but we're just looking at the drama in the background. Let's just try and balance it out a bit. And immediately it's pretty obvious that just whacking up the contrast is is very, very effective for, for what I want to do here. It is starting to get some artifacting around around here where we've got the god rays coming off of the sun. Uh, in fact, the god rays, have sort of, that's one thing that's sort of a bit missing from this image. We've got these god rays coming across here, which haven't rendered that well, uh, look a bit messy, but we're, we're starting to lose them by the time we get up to here. Uh, so I might want to try and paint something in a bit later. That's something we can we can have a play with as well, because why not? So now, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that as the background. Let's just play about with the brightness, just make sure we we want that to be sort of peaking almost. We, we want the, the the bright areas to be just sort of clipping, just to give it that sense of of realism. Because you just even with all the filters in the world and uh, you know perfect lighting and and everything else, you would still struggle to keep all even on the best camera with the most dynamic range. You'd struggle to keep those highlights under control without doing something too drastic. So that looks good for the background. We will now obviously use the uh, the mask tool again just to, to get the McLaren back to where it was. I just want to make sure this background area isn't caught up in that. So that's the difference that's made. Uh, I think that's, that's a big difference. The image looks really balanced now. We've got quite a dramatic looking image overall. I wish I cropped in a little bit further. I don't like that wall there. Might be able to do something about that cheating later. Uh, I wanted to leave a little bit of room around the crop because I'm going to use this as my thumbnail on YouTube later and I like to be able to balance it out with where my logo sits in the top right corner. So that's uh, kind of a stupid thing that you have to think about for YouTube if you, uh, you know, you need to leave uh, areas for the YouTube elements so that down the bottom here you end up with uh, time remaining on the video stuff or the length of the video I should say. So it's just stupid things you have to deal with for YouTube that I wouldn't have to otherwise. So yeah, as I said, I'm pretty happy with that. Let's just throw a, a curves or something so we can look at the, yeah, the histogram's looking a lot better there. So we can start now, I don't need the curves, start now looking at colors. I think it's looking pretty, pretty good, but we'll, we'll have a play anyway. I like to use the, the color balance tool because you can change the colors in the separately in the shadows, mid zones and highlights and you can do some sort of filmic stuff with it. Like, It's pretty obvious to me, uh, color theory wise, that you wanna try and do something with what's available in the image. Now, orange and blue is a pretty common cinematic color grading technique. Quite often put a nice cool blue in the shadows and, and warm orange in the highlights. Now we've got loads of warm orange in this and we've obviously got the McLaren, so that's already doing that. So let's just see if we can put a bit of the teal, the sort of, they call it teal and orange, but it's, it's not really teal. I think it's closer to a sort of turquoise a lot of the time. So you've got the cyan to red slider. So we're just taking some of the reds out of the shadows at the moment. As you can see, it's very bleached in with the red to start with. Just pull it down slightly. That doesn't look too bad. What about blues just to balance it up? That is crunching our shadows, but the actual color difference is really nice there. Normally, you would then go in and add maybe a bit of warmth in the midtones using sort of the yellows and maybe in this case a bit of red to keep it orange. And in fact, I actually like that. I, I wasn't going to because of how much orange was in there, but so if we've seen them before and after, that's, uh, that's pulled down some of the shadows, which actually looks nice in the foreground, but I think it's just a bit too much. But it's just cooled off the image uh, in the foreground uh, with all that warmth in the background it means we've got this contrast. It's the thing I've been trying to go for with this whole image is the contrast between the every element of the, the picture. We've got a very in-focus car at the front, a very blurry background. We've got a very warm light at the front and cool, uh, sorry, warm light in the background and cool in the front. We've got uh, this kind of soft bloom there and hard edges there. So it just trying to create this contrast across the image is working quite nicely. But because of that, uh, we just need to bring up just the brightness just a touch because I think it's just killing us a little bit in the foreground that's about right in fact uh, it's killing the background so we'll just use once again use the mask just to, to edit out the background and there you go that's that's the difference that's made uh, so that was before the color adjustment that was after looking much better to me uh, very balanced looking image again just this is where we came from <laughs> and this is where we are now looking a lot better obviously 
So from a sort of darkroom perspective, this is pretty much done, I think. Everything I've done so far is stuff you could do in a conventional darkroom, maybe not using exactly the same tools, but you know, uh, this is exactly how working in a, in a conventional darkroom would work. You can dodge and burn in, you can change the color balance of various parts of the image. It, it was complex, this, I learned on film years ago in the tail end of film photography and doing this sort of stuff would take hours and lots of iterations, which is why Photoshop's brilliant for it. The next couple of things I'm going to do is not stuff you could do in the dark room and it's something Photoshop's great at but some purists may not like. Because I'm making a thumbnail for YouTube I don't really care what the purists like. This is very much about just making the most dramatic looking image that catches the eye on YouTube. So uh, I'm going to make another folder so we can look at this separately and I'm going to make a new layer and we're going to paint on some of the god rays that we lost during that editing. Now I bought, uh, I've got some brush packs that do light rays, but you can paint these in with a normal brush it's, or uh, crop it in from a photo on uh, that you find on Google or something. But I'm going to use the brushes because they're they're here and I have them. So accidentally painting a purple brush on there, you lose the center of the. Uh... Oh, yeah, there we go. Let's pick a nice warm color for that. We want it mostly white, but we need a bit of warmth in it. Otherwise, it's uh, not going to look like it's coming from the sun. So just like a slightly off white, keep it nice and bright. Don't want to go too orange, otherwise it'll look look weird. But let's let's have a look. Uh, we've got this this brush. I'm going to just use it straight out of the box without changing anything. And as we can see, that is far too small. So we need to increase the size of that brush. Just see the uh, square brackets if you're not familiar with the Photoshop shortcuts. So there we go. That you can see it's going the whole way across the image. I did, did it in the wrong place, but not too bad. So it needs to be coming from the sun itself. Yeah, it's not bad. There we go. That's all right. And I want one going that goes in the other direction as well. So let's go and find another brush that's going in the other direction. This one looks like it should. It definitely looks like it should be. Hit caps lock to uh, turn on and off the. Uh, sort of edges of the brush so you can see it on the thing so that'd be going about there you yeah, know that's too too much so yeah this one needs to be a bit softer than the other one so let's just turn down the opacity a little bit and try it again that's not too bad there we go that looks pretty good to me and I kind of want something almost horizontal if we've got one again this needs to be really subtle this one uh, I'm not sure that there is a really horizontal one. You can change the rotation of the brushes, but my my interest in in doing this is is waning. So, well, this is a very big one. Let's see what that. Oh yeah, that looks good. I like that. So layering these up works really well as well. So I'm going to just turn the opacity of that one I've just found down a little bit more, and we'll paint that on somewhere like that. That gives us a nice bit of bloom over the car. Now, you may look at that and think, well, that's a bit much, and you'd be right. That's uh, a lot much. So what we're going to do is we'll change the mode from norm the blend mode. Uh, you can play about with these. Uh, one of the most powerful things in Photoshop. Screen is usually good for anything that's sort of white on top that you want to sort of render through and have the background pop through or multiply. Uh, we don't. There's not enough weight in the image to do that. So I think screen or hard or soft light maybe. Hard light looks nice. Screen looks about the same. It's just not going to make a difference. So let's go with screen and we can change the opacity of this layer. So what I like to do is start moving it up to the point where I think, yeah, that looks really good. And then just pull it back a little, a little bit. That's an old uh, music mix, mixing technique. You know, you bring the level of the instrument up to the level that you think it sounds good and then just edge it back because there's sort of a, almost a lag in the brain. So uh, yeah, there we go. That's looking, that's looking really nice. I think that's still a bit much actually, showing the before and after there, so I'll just pull that back a little bit further. There's another couple of special effects that, that might look really good here. The first might be a bit of motion blur on the car, which I'm going to have a play about with, uh, and the other will be getting rid of this horrible, horrible bit of wall there, which I find really distracting. So to do both, I need composite of the image, I need a flat image, I can't work across multiple layers to do this. So we're going to do... First of all, let's just quickly show where we came from. This is the image straight out of Assetto Corsa, and this is where we've got to now. So that, that's, I'm pretty happy with that. But yeah, let's once again duplicate those layers. 
and then merge them. Right, so now I have a flat image, so we can do anything we want with that. I'm going to duplicate that, uh, which is uh, Control J or Command J if you're on a Mac. And we're going to try and just use the content aware fill on this area here. So I'm just going to use the lasso tool just to select that. Uh, I want a bit more feather on that actually, so it's not got quite such a hard edge. And we're going to use content aware fill. So Shift F5 is fill, and then we're content aware. Photoshop's usually pretty good at that, but that I think is our feather was too much. So we'll try that again. Yeah, that has pretty much solved it. Let's just zoom in to make sure there's nothing really stupid looking in there. Uh, it's copied that curb across, which is quite quite nice. I didn't even realise there was a row of curving there, so Photoshop's smarter than me. We do have this little weird bit here, so I'm just going to use the clone stamp tool just to pull a little bit of this background here, just so we don't have a white bit at the edge. And you'd never know. Perfect. Cheating, but who cares, really? <laughs> So that's that solved. So I'm just going to name that as wall remove. So I know what stage each of these is at. Now, motion blur. This could be interesting. We're going to duplicate the we're going to duplicate the layer again and we'll go into the blur gallery and it is path blur that we want. And this simulates the sort of movement of a camera. Uh, you can change the direction by moving the points. You can change the sort of differential speed between the starting and the stopping of the exposure. It's quite clever. What we're simulating really here is the, the, the camera panning with the car as it goes past. So the background and sort of the edges of the car, the bits on the edges of the focus will be, will be moving and uh, blurred in a sort of this path blur. Uh, whereas the in-focus areas, because we're using a relatively slow shutter speed for doing this kind of shot, will be in focus because the camera is synced up with it. Bad explanation, but you probably know what I mean. So we can change the speed of the blur, the movement, and it can get quite extreme. You want it along the axis of the car generally because that's how you'd be panning. But you can start to see how this is the kind of image you get in motorsport sometimes with those really fast blurs. I'm happy with that. Now, obviously that looks quite horrendous at the moment, so we're going to have to start cloning in what would be in focus if this was a, was a real shot. We will use a regular soft edged round brush, not one that big though, to start bringing the details back in. I'll turn the opacity back up to 100. If you do stuff that you don't like, you can click back on, uh, you can change the color and go back into white on the, on the, uh, on the mask to bring it back in. So generally what we're trying to do here is get the center mass of the car fully in focus while the edges sort of bleed out into the into the blur. Now that's looking reasonable uh, for a starting point. Now I'm going to turn the opacity down and just sort of blend that in so it's not just a hard transition between the two and the same at the back obviously we're completely losing the real rear wheel there so obviously we have like a different sort of differential speed between of movement between the car and the background because the car's a lot closer so we're just trying to look at how that separation works how how that's all looking so this is sort of getting there let's just do a before and after so we can see so that's the static image that is it with the the motion blur which i think looks really really good if a little bit over the top at the moment again don't worry we can we can neaten this up so there's stuff like the top of the airbox which is just horrible that needs to be sorted and we've got a T cam in here that needs to sort of needs the <laughs> the bulk of it to come back in but yeah I think that's that's looking okay again top of the shark fins a bit a bit weird not too much we can do about that that's just what's there in the image and the top of the nose, which has been a problem area, I think, for a lot of this, actually, because it was never really in hard focus, on it, and it wants to be. That was a mistake I made during the shooting, really, but there we go. I think that is, that's reasonable. It's, blend, it's blended in quite nicely, arguably a little bit over the top, so we can use the same trick of using either fill or opacity. I think I'm going to use opacity, and then bringing it up to the point where we think, yeah, that, that looks good. 
and then dialing it back. In fact, I don't think we were too over the top. Sort of before and after. And that's given us really great separation between the car and the background now. So for a, a screenshot, like a desktop background, that looks way better because you've just got fewer details in the background distracting from the main main image. Uh, and that goes the same for a YouTube thumbnail, which gets shrunk down really small. So you kind of have to understand that the balance of of the image has to work in the the way you're displaying it so you might well very well prefer it with the background because it gives it a sense of place you can sort of still tell that it's maybe a uh, red bull ring whereas uh, you know that's that's much more difficult to tell there but it doesn't bother me too much what does bother me is what's going on with that rear wheel so let's uh let's just get a bit more of the original image back on that rear tire because yeah, it's better right and on that inside edge of that one there I think we're happy. I, I'm, I'm happy to commit to that. I haven't hit save for a while. Hit save all the time. Just all the time. I, I, I've not even mentioned it because I just instinctively hit control S every every few seconds. It's sort of part of what part of working doing this professionally for a long time. Uh, something I might try, which may look very weird, is bringing the, the god rays on top. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that looks really cool. It's a bit too much. Now we've got the blurred out background, so let's just pull that back a little bit. There you go, happy with that. That's just adding just that little bit of extra sparkle, for want of a better word. Again, we're at a stage now with that blurring where maybe the image just needs to be slightly brighter overall in the foreground. So I'm going to come back in and just add a little bit more brightness just to, I think, just to the near face of the car. Not even I'm not even looking at this area now. I'm just looking at here. So we'll use the mask. I'm going to fill it black because... I know most of it isn't going to be used and then I'm just going to paint in this area here which I know just needs a little bit more a little bit more brightness and that is looking much better for it in fact I don't like it on the inside of the wheel rim so that can go and I don't like it on the front so it's literally just for that but it looks a lot better for it and maybe maybe we want a little bit on the rear tire just to yeah, I'm happy with that. So then, if I group this lot up, the, the stuff we've just done, this was before we added any of the special effects. Still a pretty decent image. This is what the special effects have added to it. Uh, oh yeah, you can see turning it on and off that perhaps we're losing a little bit of contrast. So we could add a uh, another just a little bit of tweaks of brightness and contrast in the overall image. As you can see. This is a very iterative process. In every step you do slightly you may change uh, decisions you may have made earlier. And that's fine. Just, you know, keep adding layers, consolidating, doing what you need to do. It's uh, working like this is sort of fairly non-destructive, which is nice. So we can just add a bit, bit more contrast, a bit of brightness just to compensate from the loss there. And there we go. Perfect, I think. I'm, I'm happy with that. And I am happy to call that image complete. So guys, if you managed to stick around to the end, then congratulations. I hope some of it was informative, and if not informative, interesting. And if not interesting, then I really don't know why you're still here at this point of the video. So I guess all that's left to say is goodbye. Thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.